Hello everyone, welcome to another Python tutorial series. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a cookie clicker game in Python with your SNA engine, and I hope you like it. So first of all, let's import our module and create a window. So we can write from your SNA, import star. And to set up our window, we can write app is equal to your SNA. And app.run. And in between that, what we could do is change the window color. So I'll change it to light green. So window color is equal to color.rgb. And the RGB value is 128, 255, and 128. And now what I'll do is create a, but a button. So B is equal to button. I'll set the text equal to plus. And I'll set the color equal to color dot zero. I'll set the scale equal to 0.125 and set the x position equal to negative 0.5 and if I run this now we see that we have a green background um if I go back and check something this should be negative 0.5 so if I run this again now I have a clickable button on the left with the plus sign but when we click it, nothing really happens. So now we want to create a function so that every single time we click a button, the function will be called and run. So what I could do is create a add item function. And for now, we'll pass nothing into it. And when B dot on click, so when B is click, when the button is clicked, we're going to call this add item function. So now I want to create a grid entity in the middle so that when uh, the click, when the button is clicked, some item is going to be added to it. So I will create a field variable, and this is equal to an entity. So the model equal to a quad. So the scale equal to three five. And set the texture equal to assets grid.png so now if I run this scale equal to 3 comma 5 so now we see a 3 by 5 grid in the middle of our window next we want to create the items so that uh, I can add them to the grid so for my items I'm going to have an images list equal to a bunch of images so cookie.png, coin.png, bill.png, house.png. And we're going to have four items to add, which are the cookie, coin, bill, and house. And the idea is that when we click the button, we'll first add cookies to the grid, uh, to the grid box one by one until all 15 boxes are filled up. Then coins will be added to the grid box one by one, and we'll repeat this process for the bills and the houses. So we'll first create a global variable m, which will count how many times the button has been clicked. So I'll have m equal to zero. And inside of our add items function, I'll set global variable m. And then we'll create the x, y coordinates of the items. So the coordinates are defined so that for the same item, it will be added in order until all 15 boxes are filled. And when all the boxes are filled up with one item, the next item will follow and repeat this process until all four items are added. So essentially, I'll set x equal to n mod 3 minus 1, and y is equal to m mod 15 minus 6, divided by 3. And so mod calculate uh, the mod calculation will be used here to create repeated number sequence. And we also want to move the grid closer to us each time it is filled up one by one so that we'll have a clean grid field each time uh, we start add a new item. So I'll set field.z equal to negative 0.11 times m divided by 15. I'll set e equal to an entity with the model equal to a quad. And also the texture equal to assets 
plus images m over 15. m over 15. And also the position equal to the x, y, negative 0.1 minus 0.1 times m over 15. Model plus quad. This should be model equals quad. Now, if I show this, uh, when we first run, we can see that the items are being added one by one to the grid boxes. And first, you have the cookie. And if I actually go back, let's see 15 minus 6 over 3. This should be divided by 3. So if I run this again, Click. Now I have my cookie there. And let's see. And every single time, I should also increase m by 1. So m plus equal to 1. And so if I run this, now when I click my first cookie, my second, my third, and I can keep adding cookies up until the very top. But once I reach, uh, once I click it again, notice now I have a coin now. So I can keep clicking these coins until I reach some dollar bills. Then I reach the houses. And once I reach the house, if we continue to click the button, well, the game just stops. Uh, this is because we run out of uh, range instead of our list. And so we'll need to fix this. And so what we could do is add some boundary checking for M. So essentially if we want to check if m divided by 15 is greater than 3. And we'll set m equal to 15 times 3. Um, so now, even after we reach 15 houses, it will keep showing 15 houses if we continue to click the button. So if I run this, I keep clicking these buttons. And I reach the uh, houses, so now I'm in the dollar bills. And now that I'm at houses, if I keep trying to click, nothing more will be added. So next, we also want to label the player based on which uh, item is added to the grid. So we have four items. So there'll be four labels, which is student, employed, middle class, and rich. And we want to create a list to basically hold these labels. So what I'll do is create my list down here. So I'll have my text equal to an empty list. Now I'll append a new text, which is student, so the x equal to 0.4, so the y equal to negative 0.12, so the background equal to true. And I'll do this for the other values as well. So this is student, this is employed, This is middle class. And this will be rich. And some of these y positions will change as well. So this will be negative point uh, oh four. This y position will be positive point oh four. And this one will be positive point twelve. So now if I run this we'll see four labels on the right. And if we take a look, these two are overlapping. So the middle class should be positive 0.04. And if I run this, uh, we see the four labels to the right. And the idea is to highlight the label when the corresponding item is added. For example, student will be highlighted when cookie is added, and rich will be highlighted when house is added. So next we're gonna highlight the corresponding label and so when a label is highlighted, the scale becomes 2, and the color becomes gold. Otherwise, the scale will become what? White. The scale will become 1, and the color will become white. So instead of our define item function, define item function, what I could do is create a for loop. So for i in range the length of text, if i is equal to m 
over 15. Then we'll set text index i dot scale equal to 2. We'll set text index i dot color equal to color dot gold. Otherwise, we'll set text index i dot scale equal to 1. Then text index i dot color equal to white. So now if I run this, I click the plus button once. Now we see that student is scaled two times the size, and now it's gold. And then I keep adding until I get to the coin. And now employed is highlighted. And I can keep doing this for every level. And once you reach rich, now rich is highlighted. And it does also increase in size. So this is the end of this video. If you have any comments, please put them below at the comment section. If you have not subscribed to our channel, please hit the subscribe button below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.